Hi everyone, um, happy almost end of the year 2020. Uh, what a wild, wild year this has been. My name is Laura Zapata. I am one of the co-founders of Clear Loop and we've been doing these, I think this is our third one, um, to try to just uh, get started and uh, just really describe what it is that we're trying to do and demystify a lot of the stuff that's going on around climate action, climate change, and just we know uh, science can be really intimidating for a lot of us. Uh, climate change is definitely something that uh, is scary. And so you can feel really helpful, helpless when it comes down to what do we do as individuals. And so um, Clearloop is really here to try to make it as easy as possible to understand what's happening, what we can do, and most importantly, um, what can the companies that we support um, with our dollars do um, to help us both um, fight um, cl the climate crisis, but also clean up the grid. And so we're thrilled um, to be able to do this. And today we're just gonna take the time to um, join in uh, and, and do a deep dive, not that deep of a dive, um, to talk about some of the stuff that's out there. There's a lot of companies making lots of news about uh, their commitments on climate action. And so we're here to um, say that 2021 will be the year of climate action. We're, uh, we believe it, we are ready, we're ready to get to work. Uh, but let's take a look back at 2020 and whew, it's been a rough one. Um, but really start div diving into some of the, the terms that have been thrown around. So we know there's lots of companies making commitments. If you Google carbon things, you will see that there is lots of commitments around carbon neutrality and 100% green, um, carbon negativity, climate positivity, climate neutral, so many terms. Um, and it can be a really uh, hard to try to figure out what exactly all of those things mean. And then what is an offset? What is a wreck? What does 100% renewable energy mean? Uh, and so we have had to do learning of our own. And so we just want to go um, out here and share um, as much as we've learned and, uh, and then get your feedback and continue to, to just implement these things as we grow clear loop. So um, we know 2020 has been an incredibly hard year for a lot of folks, um, many, uh, many people across the world. Uh, so we're, we're um, happy to put that year behind us, but one little ray of sunshine that we've seen and we've noticed throughout the years that there's been lots of commitments and lots of news from different organizations. And what we found as a company is that as we've been out there talking to companies and, and knocking on doors from um, big corporations to small um, startups, the sort of the theme across the board is that we've seen that there's a great deal of emphasis on how do we come back? How do we um, reopen the economy in a more sustainable way? How do we uh, make sure that the actions of uh, businesses, that they take responsibility, they want to take responsibility for um, their impact on the climate, and then what what do they do about it? And so that's that's the, the bit of ray of sunshine for, for this year, but lots of terms have been thrown out. So one of the things um, that uh, has been a term that has been used often is uh, carbon offsets. And so essentially a company has a carbon footprint, we know because of all the activities it, it, it takes. So as it's making a product, it's transporting materials, it's um, uh, burning things up, um, doing, doing all kinds of activities and then shipping it back to you, um, especially around this holiday season, we know that there's gonna be lots of delivery people very busy um, because we can't get out and, and do a lot of the activities that we're used to. So all of that has a carbon footprint. And so what companies have started to do is starting to look at what, or what are the materials that they're using? What are the, um, how can they uh, improve the efficiencies of their supply chain and just try to reduce their, their greenhouse gas impact and their carbon footprint um, as much as possible. But there's sort of an irreducible carbon footprint. Um, you know, we, we're still using uh, jet fuel to fly planes uh, and deliver your goods. We're still um, having to use natural gas to heat a lot of the processes that um, have to happen in, in the manufacturing process of a lot of the stuff. So um, we know um, that the act of offsetting, so um, a carbon um, offsetting is basically the, the act of, you can't take that, uh, reduce that carbon footprint directly from your own processes you're using 
um, natural gas or you're using uh, jet fuel to get your, your things done. And so if there's not an alternative to it, how can you take that responsibility for that carbon footprint and take it out of the atmosphere in some other way, in an indirect way? So that's the, the verb, offsetting. Um, and I was, I was trying to do a little whiteboarding over here, but then I realized that I don't know how to make the, the, the mirror thing uh, not happen. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna go old school and, and read off of these notes. Um, but essentially that means that lots of companies have ways, there's other places in the economy where we take, can take that carbon out. And so at Clearloop, we believe that one of the greatest near-term opportunities is really in our electricity grid. If we can um, reduce our greenhouse gases from electricity, if we can stop burning fossil fuels to create electricity and the stuff that's powering this um, video today, then we will make a really big dent um, in our um, efforts to stop climate change. And so that basically means, because uh, today, and I think I've said this in, in a few different videos before, um, the biggest opportunities, the sort of lowest hanging fruit, but also the biggest uh, responsible um, sectors of the, of the carbon footprint of the United States specifically is both transportation and our power sector. So that means that those two things, if we can electrify our transportation systems, we've heard there's lots of EVs, electric vehicles coming down the, the, um, the road in the next couple of years. But if we're going to plug those things in, we need an electricity system that can sustain that and not overload and, and rely on the same fossil fuel resources like natural gas um, and coal that we've been uh, relying on. So we need to clean up that grid. We need to refurbish it with renewable sources. And so that's why Clearloop um, is partnered with companies that want to help us clean up the grid build more solar um, projects across the country and help us start replacing some of those other fossil fuel things, uh, um, assets that, um, that then create our electricity today. If we can do more of that, if we can accelerate that and build it in the places where it's not happening, then we'll, we're really gonna take a chunk out of um, the, the carbon footprint that we have today. So that is where um, lots of the offsets come in. So the idea that you can take the carbon out of somewhere else, you can't do it directly. You're taking your carbon footprint, you're measuring it and taking it out of something else. There's lots of natural solutions uh, that have been pitched and sort of that's what's known as the carbon offset uh, world and sort of people think about it buy a tree, uh, protect a forest, uh, or even burn some, um, some methane to then convert it into carbon, um, carbon dioxide. It's a less harmful greenhouse gas, but still not, not great. And so those are all the sort of venues that companies have to offset their carbon footprint. Again, they can't do it directly. They're taking it out of something else. We believe that the best place where you can take it out of and not just capture it, but avoid it altogether, have that car cap carbon not even be created because we're not burning fossil fuels to create electricity anymore, is by refurbishing um, and cleaning up our grid by building new solar projects. So that's where the carbon offsetting sort of action comes in. Um, and there's a lot of kind of conflating of what a carbon offset exactly means, but as long as it's tangible and additional and permanent, there are some you know, tests to what counts as a, as a carbon offset, additional meaning that you have, a, were it not for your investment, it would not exist. Um, that is incredibly important. Uh, that is, if you're causing this thing to happen, um, that is number one thing. And then the other one is making sure that that's permanent, that it can scale and it's permanent, that when you make that investment, that solar project or that tree and forest will stay there for um, the, the time that it's, it's meant to, for forever, um, to permanently replace the, the greenhouse gases that you're trying to avoid or capture. So that's sort of the carbon offset world. That's what that is looking into, um, there's more and more companies that are trying to, to figure out what is real, what is tangible, and consumers are getting much more uh, smart about this space. And so that's to demystify um, some of the definitions around carbon offsets. And one important thing is that as companies are making commitments about becoming carbon neutral, that means that they're taking their entire carbon footprint, they're measuring that out. There's a very um, sort of simple, straightforward way to measure that out. For some companies, less straightforward because they have lots of different supply chains and it's, it's hard to measure all those things, but there's a 
sort of formula to figure out what is the carbon footprint of natural gas, gasoline, electricity, depends on when you are, um, so they can measure it. And then what do they do about it? Lots of companies are looking to reduce, and that's the number one thing. Make sure that you're using better materials, better processes, and reducing that carbon footprint. And then next is you can't do the sort of irreducible carbon footprint. What do you do about that? Um, then investing in taking that carbon out of some other sector of the economy. We at Clearly believe that the electricity grid is the most uh, important, tangible, near-term opportunity that we have right here in this country, and so that's why we're going after it. Uh, and there's, but there's other uh, ways to offset your carbon footprint, which many, many folks are, are familiar with that in the, in the tree uh, world. So that's the first sort of thing. So that, that means that's when a company is saying that they're carbon neutral, they've taken the carbon footprint, they've measured it, and they're taking out that same carbon footprint from either their own processes or taking it out with uh, carbon offsets. And then the second thing is there's a lot of talk about carbon negative, which means that you're not just measuring your own footprints and taking responsibility for that, you're oftentimes doing twice as much. So that's where a lot of those announcements have come in. So uh, folks out there are looking for solutions, trying to figure out how do we um, take responsibility for all of that carbon footprint and do more than just what we're creating because they've acknowledged that either they have a longer history or we need to just get to work, um, we get Rakhilakin because time is is of the essence and we have uh, a, what we know what we need to do we know we need to reduce greenhouse gases and so how do we get after it in the time that we need to and just get get to work um so that's what the carbon negative folks are talking about and, and it's very similar to climate positive um which is basically just doing more um for for taking responsibility for the carbon footprint uh, of, of these companies and then making commitments that go beyond just kind of your four walls. Um, and that's very uh, important and, and every company has a, a chance to really dig in and figure out how they can contribute to all of this um, stuff. And then on the, on the renewable energy side of things, there is often lots of claims around 100% renewable energy and RECs. And if you are familiar in the space or are not familiar uh, in the space, a, a REC is a renewable energy credit. And so what that means is that essentially for every megawatt hour, so a megawatt hour of electricity in the US, just to put, put this into context because we've had to learn a lot about this, in the US, a family, um, an average family uses about a little bit over 10 megawatt hours of electricity every year. And so think about uh, in that context, one megawatt hour, so a little less than that, um, every megawatt hour of electricity that's generated from a renewable energy source, so wind, hydro, um, solar, is counted as a renewable energy credit. And so one megawatt hour equals one rec. Um, and that means that uh, companies that buy those recs, so a company may not be able to put rooftop solar or plug into a, a renewable energy source, either they're, um, they can't do it directly from their utility or can't do it on their operations, they're going out into the marketplace and buying recs. And so what, they, what that means is basically that they are buying the credit and saying, okay, in my company we use X number of megawatt hours of electricity every year or every month. And so I'm going out into the marketplace and I'm going to ensure that for every megawatt hour of electricity that I'm using as a company, I'm going and I'm buying the equivalent number of recs that covers that as, as renewable energy. Um, so, so that's what companies have been doing when they call uh, many of them um, that, that are not able to tap into direct sources or sign on to power purchase agreements, which I think we've talked about in the past, um, essentially get to do it. So that's the majority of the companies out there. Um, and so the, the thing with that though is that there is, there's not a carbon value associated with that uh, renewable energy credit oftentimes. And so that means that we're sort of losing a little bit of the connection between why you want green power. The reason we all want green power um, is to ensure that we can reduce our greenhouse gases. That's the whole point of all of this stuff is in order to stop climate change from happening, in order to have a real response to um, the climate crisis that we have today, 
is we need to get really serious about reducing our greenhouse gases. And that means that every source um, that, that we see today, so again, the, the transportation system, all the different vehicles that we use, um, as well as the power sector, those are the places where we have the highest emissions. And so we need to reduce those uh, at scale and quickly. And so the way that we need to do that is by, in, on the electricity side, we can replace those fossil fuel, the, the coal plants and the natural gas plants, um, and build more solar uh, and more renewable energy sources because they don't have any emissions. You're using the sun's power to then power and create electricity, which we'll dig into next year uh, a little bit more. But that is essentially what we need to do. And so sometimes those wrecks um, can lose some of that um, connection to what it's actually causing to do. So that's why at Clearloop we're really focused on Look, um, you when companies are looking to reduce their greenhouse gases, when they want the environmental attribute, they want to reduce their carbon footprint, what we're asking them to do is partner with us to help us build more um, solar projects across the United States in order to help clean up the grid. You know, sunshine is the best disinfectant, we like to believe. And so um, the way that we do that is essentially by helping um, when companies are, are looking to reduce their greenhouse gases, they're paying for a fee that then helps us build uh, these projects across the country, helps us scale um, the reductions of, of greenhouse gases and something that is a real, um, it's a real great uh, opportunity for us because in the United States today, as we've talked before, only 2% of our electricity comes from solar resources. And we know the sun shines uh, quite bright, especially down here in the south. And so we're really excited about the opportunity for next year and in the years to come to dive in um, and, and get to work. And so we believe uh, that 2021, we're declaring it today, is the year of climate action. And so all of these commitments have been a ray of sunshine. We're encouraged by the kind of conversations we've had with companies, large and small, and the type of, they, they, they're industry agnostic, but we believe that now it's the time to act um, as we recharge for the new year. Um, as we come back from this uh, health crisis that has taken over our, our world, we are encouraged by the positivity, by um, the possibility of action, because we know that there's a great opportunity for us uh, in the coming year to really beat this back, and we believe we'll come stronger than ever. So 2021 is the year of climate action. We're ready to get to work, and we hope that you are too. Uh, tune in into next year. Who knows where we'll be, um, but we're, we're excited that you're coming on this journey with us and stay tuned, send questions and drop us a line at hello at clearloop.us. Thanks so much.